We all love the thrill of delivering a successful exploit, getting domain administrator or popping a shell, but being a pen tester isn't all fun and games. So today I'm going to run through some of the reasons why you might reconsider this career path. Pen testing and technical cybersecurity roles in general can be incredibly rewarding, but it does come with its own set of challenges that you need to be prepared for. And of course, if you've experienced something similar or have some advice for others, then let us know down in the comments below. And if you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's dive in. Do you worry about privileged access sprawl in your organization? Uncontrolled privileged accounts are a prime target for attackers. A single compromised account can grant access to your entire network. And that's why at TCM, we trust Keeper. Keeper's zero trust privileged access management brings together password, passkey, secrets, and connections management into one single control plane for effortless security and usability. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper PAM is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless, and of course has no implementation fees. If you're looking for a new solution to secure every user and every device, check out keeper.io forward slash TCM to schedule a quick demo with their awesome team. Starting with an easy one, you're going to experience stress in many different forms. It could be because of a difficult client, a tight deadline, unclear communication, or as I've personally experienced it in the past, unrealistic expectations from upper management. Unfortunately, there's no singular way to deal with this issue. And of course, we can try to improve our processes and communication. But I also recommend that if things are getting rough, try to take some time to yourself to breathe and remember that it's probably not as bad as CrowdStrike taking out the internet. There's a skill around accepting things, and if you can roll with the stress that sometimes comes with being a pen tester, then you're going to be successful. Next up, the high expectations and responsibilities. Often senior managers or non-technical directors don't fully understand what you're doing, yet they expect you to perform miracles. So once again, we can sometimes improve on these situations with good communication and managing expectations, especially if you're good at managing upwards, but being the specialist in the room can be a heavy burden to carry when all you want to say is it's not really feasible with no money and no resources but they want you to deliver something like next week anyway. Then there's reporting, writing up your findings in a clear and concise way that both technical and non-technical people can understand. This is a skill in itself. And I actually added this to the list, not because I don't like reporting. Personally, I do like doing it. And it's nice to take some time away and create something that shows all of the effort that I've put into an engagement. But I do know that some people hate reporting. And so if that's you, then definitely prepare yourself and also look for ways to use templates and automation to keep everything as smooth as possible. Next, we have burnout and imposter syndrome. And these are real issues in our field. You're constantly learning and adapting, and sometimes it feels like you'll never know enough. This coupled with the high expectations and responsibility that we talked about earlier is also a cause of stress and the pressure to stay on top can lead to serious burnouts. This has happened to me in the past. And generally speaking, what happened helps me personally is one, getting good sleep and two, deciding on clear priorities. Everything else can take a backseat is a good way to make yourself feel like you're not missing out on life when one or two things become so dominant. Irregular work hours can also be another downside, especially if you have commitments or family to look after outside of work, but also I kind of like this one. Of course, deadlines can be tight and sometimes you have to work odd hours to get the job done. And I think that's okay every once in a while, but some organizations, I won't mention any names, but you can just look at big consultancies on Glassdoor. This is a regular occurrence. And then within that, it becomes expected and soon you have a workforce who might be there for 50, 60, 70 hours a week but really aren't any more productive than if they were there for half that time. Time is our most precious resource so don't give up on it so easily. Ethical challenges also play a part in this so you'll face things 
where you'll need to make tough decisions and you'll run into situations where an individual or organization is doing something that either you disagree with or is simply illegal. We won't dive into this today because I think it's a longer and important topic for another video because we should all be prepared to what to do in these sorts of situations, but just know that at some point in your career, you're probably going to face some ugly things. Next, we have keeping up to date, which is a constant challenge. There are some days where I just wished I could chill and never have to read another blog post ever again or do some local testing, but there are also other days where I enjoy learning and researching new things. Continuous learning, regardless of whether you see it as a good or a bad thing, is something that we all have to deal with, and that's all part and parcel of working in cybersecurity and being a good pen tester. So next, you'll likely face animosity from strangers. Not everyone appreciates what we do. In fact, barely anybody appreciates it. And you can often find yourself on the receiving end of people's negative attitudes. There are ways to minimize this so that we get off on the right foot with people, but just know that people that you've never met or interacted with before will probably hate you for no good reason. And again, and we just need to be prepared and be able to deal with it. So next, I wanna talk about certifications. And if you're like me, you'll probably develop a toxic love-hate relationship with certs. I do think they're necessary for career progression, but they can be expensive, time-consuming, and sometimes feel like a, another hoop to jump through, especially after you already have some skills and experience, and it just feels less and less worthwhile. So what I'd try to recommend is that when you're thinking about taking on a certification, set yourself some goals and commit to taking it, but relax about the outcome. If you don't get it first time around, then no worries, try again another time. Certs are stressful, and as we discussed before, we need to do our best to reduce the stress in our lives and at work. Now, I'm not sure how many points we have left, but the next is rising competition in the field. There are always new, talented individuals entering the market and that imposter syndrome that we already talked about is probably going to begin to creep in. Just remember that often people, including me, show their best sides and whilst you might look at someone and think, ah, oh, that's awesome, they know so much, it's probably only about the thing that they're talking about. We all have different experiences and different understanding. You watching this video right now will know things that I will never know and I probably know a few you AppSec things that you might not know. So yes, competition is going up, but honestly, it's the people that stay committed and consistent that are successful, not those who are talented. I've met and hired plenty of talented people and they often don't achieve half as much as those who are simply motivated and committed and consistent to getting what they want. And our final point today is that the workload can be inconsistent. So sometimes you'll be swamped and other times you'll have very little to do. Depending on your situation, this can make it tricky to maintain a work-life balance, but I do know that some people prefer this style of work, but especially if you're working for a consultancy, then this is something to be prepared for. Now, to wrap up, if you have any other reasons or experiences on why someone might want to reconsider a career in pen testing or reconsider entering the field or world of cybersecurity, then let us know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.